Now I will explain the main concepts behind the operation of a nuclear power plant. And real quick, take note that that's pronounced nuclear, not nuclear. Even though America has had several presidents that can't pronounce it correctly, it doesn't really matter how the president pronounces it. It's properly pronounced nuclear, and you can see that in the spelling there, nuclear. So nuclear power plant. Draw this on the page here. Draw a building down here shaped something like this usually has a domed roof and this building has thick walls and they're thick concrete walls because that helps keep radiation from leaking through them and this building is full of water and I'll go ahead and label this the water is called the primary coolant and it's a coolant because it keeps things cool and it literally keeps everything in there from melting the primary coolant and inside here is the reactor core. C-O-R-E. And I'll come up here at the top and just draw a, a little picture of what's going on in the reactor core. Inside the reactor core there are these little pieces of uranium. Maybe sticks of uranium the size of pencils or smaller. They're fairly small. And uranium is radioactive which means that it decays spontaneously. Every now and then a little uranium atom will just go and disappear, or parts of it will disappear. Some of the mass literally disappears and becomes energy. And, and that's what it means to be radioactive. The mass is changing from matter into energy, and it's emitting radiation. The energy is emitted as heat and light of various frequencies, and it's dangerous radiation. Nobody goes inside this building you would die very quickly inside that building because of all the radiation. The radiation comes from the decay of the uranium. And the equation that describes this is Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared. You take a little bit of mass, m, and you multiply it by c squared. And c is the speed of light. And light is fast. c is a big number. c is 186,000 miles per second not miles per hour, miles per second. So C is fast and C squared is a huge number. So you can take a little tiny amount of mass, multiply it by this great big number and that tells you how much energy you get when the mass is converted to energy. And because of that, just the amount of uranium that you can hold in your hand can power a nuclear power plant for years and years. There's a tremendous amount of energy stored in that mass, and it's released because the material is radioactive. Now, what's, what happens here, when you put enough uranium together, it can react explosively. A little bit of uranium might start emitting some radiation. Say, say an atom, a uranium atom, right here decays and so this energy is flying out. Well the energy when it hits this other piece of uranium that energy stimulates atoms over there to decay. So this starts decaying and the radiation emitted from that hits the other pieces of uranium, uranium and causes those to start, decay, start to decay and the, the radiation emitted from one piece of the uranium decaying causes the rest of the uranium to decay more rapidly and this can in, in just a fraction of a second this can rapidly get out of hand and explode and that's what you would call either a bomb a nuclear bomb or if it just got hot enough to melt that would be a nuclear meltdown and everything in the core could melt and then and a nuclear meltdown is obviously a terrible thing if, if, if this melts it gets so hot it melts right through the bottom and it would sink straight through the Earth's crust. It would, you couldn't hold it up. It would melt through whatever you were trying to hold it with. And, and this is what happened in the Soviet Union at Chernobyl. The core melted and fell out the bottom. And then all of this primary coolant came blasting out of here as radioactive steam. All of this coolant is radioactive because it's been in direct contact with the, with the core. And it's very dangerous stuff. And this cloud of radioactive steam blew over a large area and did a lot of damage. So we need a way to keep the core from reacting with from, from getting in an out of control chain reaction. So to do that they have these devices called control rods and I'll draw them here and they might look something like this. Let me try that again. Okay, the control rods go down 
go down between the pieces of uranium and the control rods absorb the radiation. So they can lower these control rods down in there and, and this material absorbs the radiation. So it keeps the decaying uranium from stimulating other pieces of the, the decaying uranium from, to making it decay more rapidly. It prevents the chain reaction. So you might get a little bit of decay down here and the pieces at the bottom are stimulating each other to decay, but they can control the rate of reaction by lowering or raising the control rods. Lowering the control rods shields the pieces of uranium from each other and slows the reaction down. Raising the control rods allows them to be more exposed to the decay of the other pieces and the reaction picks up speed. So they can control how much heat is generated down here in the reactor core by raising and lowering the control rods. Now as I said, the primary coolant keeps this thing from melting. This thing could get so hot that it could melt. The core down here could melt and we don't want a nuclear meltdown so the primary coolant prevents that from happening. In the process, the primary coolant gets hot. And as it gets hot, it becomes less effective as a coolant. So the primary coolant has to be cooled. And it's cooled with the secondary coolant. So some pipes are put in here, and I'll draw them like this. Imagine a pipe coming in here. And let's have it spiral around here so there's a lot of surface area of contact. And then come back out here. Okay, and this is the secondary coolant. So they pipe cool water in here and it runs around and absorbs a lot of the heat from the, from the primary coolant, keeping the primary coolant cool enough to cool the core effectively so the core doesn't get too hot. This is, this is so hot inside here that in the process the secondary coolant gets hot enough to come blasting out as steam. So steam comes out in this pipe here and they take this steam and they run it into a turbine. And you can probably predict from there the next steps. There are turbine blades in here and the steam coming, the secondary coolant that has been heated enough to become steam turns these turbine blades and the turbine turns a generator and the electricity goes from the generator into the transformer so let's label these this is the turbine here's the generator and here's the transformer and the transformer kicks it up to high voltage it, and it goes on to the power lines and out to the neighborhoods across the state or to the factories or the cities wherever it needs to go now the, the coolant comes out of the turbine and they run it into these large towers which you typically think of when you think nuclear power plant this is usually what comes to mind these large towers and these are the cooling towers and they run the the secondary coolant into the cooling towers and it gets cooled off and comes back and is then effective as a coolant for cooling the primary coolant and ready to be turned into steam again. They simply just spray it into the top of these towers and it just floats down as a mist and cools off in the process. The cooling towers are not dangerous. The, um, that's just a big cloud of steam in there cooling off and condensing into water. All the dangerous stuff is down here. And um, uh, another thing to note again is this is not drawn to scale. The, um, the, the building here might be you know, the size of a large house or something. The cooling towers are huge, several stories tall. And if you look at an aerial photograph of a nuclear power plant, the cooling towers are the most prominent thing. And they're the things that you can see from far away, and that's what you typically think of when you think nuclear power plant. But the, um, that's not the dangerous part. The dangerous part is where the radioactive material is down in the core. And also note that in reality, these things are extremely complicated. There are numerous backup systems. There are lots of um, monitoring systems. There's a, probably a million different valves and pipes in one of these buildings, one of these nuclear power plants. But the main idea is shown in this diagram. A nuclear, de uh, nuclear radioactive decay, the nuclear, nuclear reaction known as radioactive decay, releases heat. That heat is used to make steam to turn a turbine which turns the generator to produce electricity. 
So fundamentally, the power is produced in the same way in a nuclear plant as it is in a fossil fueled plant. The only difference is what is used to make the heat. In this case, it's radioactive decay to make the heat.